breaking news before we go into the interview because well yeah it's important yeah <clears throat> tell us you, you tell them what you just read well i i just i there was you know there, everybody's tell them oh every everybody's tweeting tweeting and twittering and uh there was a report that somebody was shot outside the perimeter of the outer perimeter of rnc here so they, they have several block um there's there's a fiserv forum where the convention actually occurs and then um, there's there's an inner perimeter where it's got like this 10, 12 foot fence, non climb fence that you have to go through the mags. And then there's an exterior perimeter, which is like all, you know, bollards and cement, you know, barriers and stuff like that, that it, it uh, means that cars have to go through checkpoints. And I think it's just outside that perimeter, probably it looked like look like a park or something. But there's just, a significant presence here. Everybody should know that if there's. If there's folks trying to, you know, do some funny business, there is a significant law enforcement security presence here today. Yes, and and there has been, there there has yeah. been the whole time. Yeah, it's it's significant. It's good. Everybody's got, you know, they got their head up, they got their ears perked, and and, and I'm not seeing a lot of complacency. Uh, police just shot a potential shooter around the security perimeter of the RNC. The footage here shows a heavy police presence. God keep Trump and all the RNC attendees safe from the plots of the devil so and this is coming uh, coming from behezi george yeah george yeah <clears throat> do you know him yeah well i know of him okay so he it's heard. valid because yeah, I mean, he's usually legit yeah yeah knife wielding suspect there you go it's on the screen it looks like it's up all right so that's the late breaking news we'll keep an eye on things we might even walk over there but uh i wanted to give you the floor and tell us what you expect to see over the next few days and what you're hoping to see over the next few days uh, well i think we, Butler. i think we're going to start seeing the the same thing we've seen over the we we'll start seeing that sounds kind of ridiculous we've been seeing this this message of unity this uh this constant you know you unite the tribes type of theme you know going outside what would be that the uh, normal you know what, what you would see a, a quote unquote traditional audience of conservatism and it's growing it's getting bigger and you know i've said it before i'll say it again i think what we're looking at this year this election cycle is start it's starting to look a lot like what we saw that that carter reagan election cycle where people were just absolutely fed up with the left a lot of people left the left came over to the right you know reagan wins in the landslide i think we're looking at that same type of election cycle and i might uh, even add to that and say it's a combination of his both of his elections, because remember Reagan, well, there was an attempted assassination of him as yep. well. So that couple- before the January twenty sixth, <clears throat> the January, the January shooting, before the election. What well, was that? You're talking about Reagan. Reagan. I'm yeah. talking about Reagan. No, not wasn't before the election. He was in office at the yeah. time. Right. Yeah. So yeah. he's referring to before okay. when he was when he ran against Carter. Against Carter. And, and, it, and it was such a landslide. And and also, if you remember, when when Reagan took over from Carter, the the world situation got very calm very quick. You know, the the Iranian hostages were were immediately released before Reagan even took office. You know, these are this is the type of of situation that you have when you have an environment where people are where they're serious about acting actually leading and Donald J Trump is definitely serious about leading I don't think he's ever been more serious and the one thing that I've heard people say over and over again is he going to make the same mistakes he's made in the past with regards to you know how he runs things the people he allows in his inner circle I think uh I think we're doing a discredit to the man by thinking that you know he is going to make those same mistakes I don't think he's perfect by any by any means but the guy does learn and I I think we need to be um very uh, supportive of him with his with his selection you know he selected jd vance as vice president there uh, there's there's a lot of things that go with that i mean the swing states look at the swing states and the amount of farmers that are supporting him in those swing states you know that's 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 kind of voter insurance in the swing states that's a big deal the fact that he has biracial children that doesn't matter to me but that matters to a lot of people so that's another st smart move him being a veteran and also we've got to talk about the fact that Yes, he has said some stupid things in the past, but this man has been red pilled. And if you look at the situation, what he has the opportunity to do now, he has the opportunity to be that key communicator with those people who have been unsupportive in the past and now red pill them. And he's young. Just so, like Elon Musk was red pilled in the process of procuring X and then looking through all the communications and creating those uh, Twitter files. I mean, I think it's a similar 
kind of uh, yeah, we analogy have, there. We have to welcome people that have been red pilled. We can't be this a group of people who's like, well, you haven't always been with me, so you can't be with me now. That's a fool's move. That's a fool's move. If somebody is willing to to put their ego aside and learn new information and, and realize that the, their ideology must shift based upon the information that they have, and they're willing to go through those steps and willing to eat that humble pie, well, then we should welcome them into the tribe. Absolutely 100%. Anything else than that is foolish. All right, so now that the momentum's shifting in the court of public opinion to the digital ecosystem, specifically on X and other platforms that were created since the illegal 2020 election, what do you think that the other side's going to do to maintain power? Well, okay, let's define the other side. You know, what do you mean by the other side? Because when I think of the other side, I'm thinking globalist. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking beyond. By the way, before he continues, if you don't know who Boone Cutler is, you probably should because he's the author, co-author with General Flynn of a series of books known as Introduction to Fifth Generation Warfare. Next book is How to Fight Artificial Intelligence. How to far Fight Artificial Intelligence. And the last one just came out a couple months ago Yep, is The Role of the Church. Yep, And it, it's a series that is essentially educating the populace on how to fight uh, in the fifth generation warfare landscape. So with that with said, General Flynn. With General Flynn, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's been a great journey with General Flynn being able to put these books together for people. The latest installment, Session 3, The Role of the Church, uh, you know, basically breaks down how to organize and mobilize 2.6 billion Christians around the world. And that's important, you know, to, to really put this, this quote-unquote demonizing, you know, Christian nationalist um, uh, narrative, you know, demonization campaign aside and know how to deal with that thing. Because if we're not careful, that will cause a provocation. The provocation will create negative optics. Those negative optics will turn into a campaign. And then we're going to be fighting out of a hole again. So we got to be smart about these things. But when you were talking about, you know, what's next, you know, what should we ex expect from the other side? When I see, when I say the other side, we're talking about the uniparty. We're talking about the globalists because they are they are deathly afraid of Donald J Trump seizing power you know and the, and and making that type of power shift in the United States What's because that guy's name? Yuval what is it Yuval Harari Yuval Noah Harari Yeah Yuval Noah Harari Mr producer can you bring up a clip of him uh, as we talk through this of him recently essentially saying that it looks like president trump is going to get reelected and it's going to totally take down the globalist agenda so let, like, we'll keep talking, but he'll. And the one thing you got to give, you got to give Noah Harari, you know, credit for one thing. He says what he's thinking. You know, he's not holding back. He's he doesn't. He, Same he calls thing with it, your buddy Klaus Schwab. They, they say what they say what they're thinking. They say what's on their mind. They're very very clear, very very distinct. You know, you got to give you got to take them at their word. So if you're looking at that impact indicator that no that that Harari is also saying, hey, there's going to be a global shift. We're not going to be able to do business as usual. You know, they tried to do this global reset. And if you look around the world, these populist movements have been just standing up, standing up, standing up. People do not want it. The people, the everyday common human being walking the face of the planet, just trying to feed their family is like, no, I'm not about it. I'm not going to go down that road. Yep. Argentina rejected it. El Salvador That's right. rejected it. They, Hungary's we, rejected it. We've all learned from history. And we do know that, you know, once you, when you globalize, that's really just centralizing it's centralizing power and now there's two things you always have to do you have to decentralize the power decentralize the money because once those two things become centralized one day we will all be you know working for one rich king controlling the world with autonomous drones and artificial intelligence so we must always stay decentralized with money we must always stay decentralized with with power and push the power down to its lowest level the state level the county level the municipal level and work from there we can't centralize it's a fool's move and it always ends up bad Bringing it closer, though, I, I think the echelons coming in after global, then you have the leftists as a whole, then you have the party, and then you have the administration. And we, I was at a breakfast with Vivek Ramaswamy this morning, and he's convinced that Biden's not going to make it, and that's going to be the change. There's somebody else going to be nominated. They're going to wait for us here at RNC to get through all this, wait for all speeches, wait for the vice president, wait for all of us to have all our, our, you know, the, our honeymoon after, and then they're going to go and they're going to replace Biden. And that's great. So a guy like this the day. next question. And and why wouldn't they, especially after the next debate? Let Biden draw fire. Let Biden draw fire, then pop somebody in. And, and then now there's there's no background on them. There's no head to head debate with Trump. Um, so you now know, I already kind of war game that and I have my thoughts on what's going to happen. I want to hear from either one of you. Who, who, do you who do you think is <laughs> going to replace the dementia patient? I think Newsom's at the top of the list. 
Newsom, um, do you think it could be Kamala? Well, let's think. I, I want to hear it from you. So, like, this is how. I, I, yeah, go ahead. If it's going to be a traditional uh, castling move, if you will, right? Moving the the king and replace him. You have the FEC rules, so you got to have you, you got to have Kamala Harris on the ticket, or you keep Biden and you bring in maybe they try to articulate in some sort of a legal fashion. I'm already pre-bunking it, but I heard rumors that, uh, as well as decent sources through National Files reporting, that they're trying to have Barack Obama as the VP, and they're going to place Kamala either over as governor or as a Supreme Court justice. Because he could still serve as two, for two years as president. He can. No. Because I thought it was 10 years, right? You can do 10 years? No, they're arguing okay. that so. he's going to be able to be a vice president for two years. But the way you, when you read the Constitution, it's okay. the 22nd Amendment, which is it limits the presidency to two terms, two right. elected terms. Well, that coupled with the qualifications for president means that if you've already served as president for two terms, that means you cannot serve anymore as VP. Okay. Okay. They're trying to argue that because he hasn't served as VP, then he can serve as president. Excuse me. Uh, he can serve as VP even though he's served as president. Uh, and then what happens? And the reason, and if people ask, like, well, well, can't you serve as VP for two terms and then as president? Yes, because you haven't served as president. Because if you're a vice presidential, uh, if you're a vice president and you're serving, your role and your uh, the minimum constitutional requirement to serve as president is the same. 35, the residency requirement, natural born U.S. citizen. But once you have already, because like as a VP, you have to have the qualifications to be a president. president right. But because you don't have the qualifications to be the president because you've already served twice, you can no longer try to go in as VP. Does that make sense? Right. So yeah. they're trying to push that is what I'm hearing. But what That's about what Michelle? You know, well, her yeah. office came out through her office. She said, you know, it's, it's a non-starter. But, um, you know, we don't know. And But at the end of the day, I don't think it matters. You know, I mean, if we're going to do this after that failed to say assassination, I, I, attempt, I, they, I think they've all their still, war gaming has to pivot and change in people's minds. They've already said this is going to happen. I don't think there. I don't think there, there are people like, well, maybe, well, maybe, and who, who will I, who won't I vote for? I think in the psyche of, of the average American person who's who's involved in this, who who wants to be involved in this, I think they've already made their decision. And it doesn't matter who they slide at. It doesn't. I mean, it, it would be. I, I look at it as kind of like a, it would be more like a, you know, they're going to try something. They're going to see what messaging is worth. They're going to try and set up the next move down the road. But, you know, there's there's still a lot of room to play. I mean, there's still plenty of time on the clock. We're going to see what moves they're going to make. And, and there's a response for that. So what I will say to everybody out there is just remember that this is not a one move game. It's a move after move after move and a move. So you got to stay in the fight. You got to stay in the fight to your last breath. And, and that's what winning is called. You know, you stay in the fight. There is no single one move where you, we just won. No, that's just a move. There will be other moves. And so stay in the fight. Keep your mind right and stay focused on what the goals are. And that is getting power back into this country to rest restore us back to our foundation. So that's where we're at. And that's what's happening globally around the world, too. We must reject this globalist agenda because it is a Marxist agenda at heart. And that's not us. We do not believe in democratic centralism. We do believe in our constitutional rights. But Vic said all that this morning, too. Disassembling the government, disassembling the whole, the whole thing. Yep. It was a standing speech this morning. He gave it no breakfast. No, we're it's we're good. we're gonna it's say that he's making the right sounds. Well, and that's another guy that's making the right pill. Pill. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. again, we 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 get so, you know, people just they just get so, I don't know, I don't even want to say it. You know, they get so rigid, and in some ways, rigid becomes brittle. You know, we gotta we gotta stay flexible. If there are people that they come around and learn new information and and change the way they think and and are, are, are their behavior supports them saying that they have they've had that change, then we have to believe them. Take them at their word. And and but keep an eye on them. You know, it takes a little bit of time to get that type of confidence. But but don't reject them. Don't reject them. We don't have time for that. We've got to bring as much mass into this into this uh, into this movement as we can. Mass equals penetration. And right now we need to penetrate deep. So you think Gavin? On the left, yeah, Gavin. He, he, make, take, he makes sense for me. You, as it is right now. I think it follows. Let me ask you before you go. If it stays the way it is, do you think Trump can win California? Yes. If things, yeah. But if Gavin put, gets put, then he doesn't win California. I think, I, I honestly, I think there's, there's, 
I think there's cause, and I think it, it's it's reasonable to say the people have already made their decision. Yeah, I think it's reasonable to say. I think the election has already been done in the minds of the people of America, and the election is is going to be in when, in when favor this, of Donald Trump. When this happened, I was in the airport, in Raleigh, on Saturday, and the first reports came out, and we thought, what? You know, we thought it was another. You know, we thought it was a joke or something. You know, because it was just so so over the top. And then we, the TV started playing, and everybody started seeing it. And everybody in the, the gate area was pissed. They were mad. They was, we were sitting next amongst a bunch of Democrats, handful of Democrats, you know, because they were, what are you? Who are you? What are you doing? You know, I voted Democrat my whole life. I'm voting for Trump now. I'm voting. The guy said, I've voted Democrat my whole life. I'm voting for Trump. I'm tired of this. People are using their full voice again because yeah. they've hit that pain point. And that, that's an impact indicator. People using their full voice. They're, they're not whispering about what they're thinking, what they're doing and feeling yeah, each other. Right into a break. They're, they're going, they're using their full voice with, with a sense of conviction. You know, the pain point has been hit and, and that's, that is going to necessitate a change. We're going to take a quick break, but before we do, I wanted to, during the break, we're going to go ahead and show the audience parts of the convention here at the Baird Center. I got one we'll more question we'll before we go bump into a few folks. I got one more question. Ten seconds. Since Vance is now going to be the VP. Who does DeWine pick as his replacement? Does That's going to get funky. Like they, they went to school together. That's going to get can... funky. <clears throat> That's going to get we'll funky. See. We'll, we'll talk see. about that after. I think, there, I think there's plenty to war game there. I think that's going to get funky. That could go bad, you know. Um, so, I, but, I mean, if we're sitting here talking about it, other people have already thought about it, and I, I'm sure there's a move in play, and, mm-hmm. and we've got to support that move. All right, with that, see you on the other side. All right, let's walk. We're on the Ivan Rakeling <laughs> Report. And what's the name of this break? The Baird Center. We're at the Baird Center in Milwaukee. My hands would crack and bleed, deep cuts and cracks every winter for years. No matter what we did, we couldn't What's this? Street yard? Yes, Street yard. We're on uh, Citizen Media News, Twitter. So this is the... Invisible Marauder. What do we call the invincible? What are we called? The Deep State Marauder. The, the steep, deep, deep. I need deep. to put my shirt on. Deep State Marauder. Invisible, invincible. Yeah. So we're gonna switch to the camera. Because we're gonna uh, we're gonna walk through. We're gonna walk through the. Uh, so this is a convention center. Barrett Center. And this is Convention Fest down here. Got the commercial going right now. I know. On the Rakeland right now. On the Rakeland report. So this is coming down into the, this is like vendors. There's a couple of uh, little museum and displays. There's a display of the Oval Office back over there. Where's Boom? We're following Ivan Raiklin. Uh, he's doing a live on Ivan Raiklin report. Uh, he's got a commercial break, and we'll come back live in 10 seconds. Where's Boone? I don't know. All right, there you have it. So I'm going to flip the camera, folks, here for the regular report for the last half of the show. And I just kind of want to go and show you what it's looking like over here at the RNC convention. Let's see if we can bump in anyone that we know or that know us. Let's see here. Big range, conservative. GOP influencers. And as we talk, I just wanted to see who's all here. You got American women. Okay. Okay. Women for America? Concerned women for America. I think this is me and your row over here in this building. They have some vendors here selling some food. Uh, I was bumping into there in the middle. I think Criminal News Network has a stand over here somewhere across the street. I think there's, yeah, here we go. Perfect. 
Let's go check it out, Jim. Jersey. Let's go Devils. Rangers suck. New York Rangers what? suck. Hey, relax. I'm trying to get in here. Yeah, Jack, you think you need your own Congressman Brockman would interview me too. Pardon, sir. Uh, you want to do an interview? Uh, do you want to do a quick interview? Just how much going on in Congress? Uh, Just what I was going on. We switch the camera. You do that. Ivan, come over here. Uh, here Ivan, 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 move this way. Yep. Can you give us an update on what? We expect to see in the Congress moving forward for the last quarter of well, 118 I Congress. I think the most significant things going on will be behind the scenes as we prepare to get hit the ground running in January. You know, we have big problems as far as excessive government spending. Mm -hmm. uh, we have big problems as far as this wokeness throughout all areas of government. Won't have to agree. Uh, attached, and we have to be preparing for what we do with the board. Give me the time. Next, you know, the inflation is driven by excess of government, so I think behind the scenes, we're going to be looking how much we have to spend in different areas of the government to get rid of this inflation. Now, you chair one of the key subcommittees in Congress, right? Which is uh, oversight, uh, and on oversight, we're dealing with foreign affairs, uh, military, and the southern border, and we'll right. try to have some more hearings on that committee to educate the public mm -hmm. the size of the problem because obviously so much of what we want to do is depend upon getting things in front of the and we've got to do a better job of educating the public now you is, is this your district or are you just north of here uh, i'm a, i'm about 12 miles north 12 here. miles north so i mean how's it looking what are the prospects for well, us I, winning the house i again? feel good i mean you you heard uh last night the Huge amount of enthusiasm for Donald Trump. Show Absolutely. You know, normally you wouldn't have a president show up uh, on Monday of a convention we invite. I think because the horrible things that happened over the weekend, uh, he showed up with a with a bandaged ear and just everybody does. What's the sentiment in your district since that happened? Like, what's um, the general? Oh, just amazing. amazing relief. If you stop and think about it, if somebody took a shot from 150 yards away, and hit the guy in the ear, but not the head. How many times do you have to take a shot like that for it to happen? Probably hundreds, maybe probably thousands of times before someone could, could duplicate something or take that if that came that close. So it really was, God was with President Trump over the weekend. Mm -hmm. We've got to Absolutely. make sure now. Because he literally, I watched it so many times. I think after the shot, the trigger was pulled, he leans slightly forward and looks over after the trigger pulled. That's the only reason why I think yeah. he survived that. Right, right. God's grace. His head was just in a two inches different than it was. If he would have turned his head a little bit more, it would have been all So what's the prediction moving forward? How many seats do we pick up? Well, I think in the... Two-thirds of the house? I'm going to I'm gonna guess 12 <laughs> new seats. I love 12 that. new seats. All right. I'll hold you. Well, the, 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 the cool thing was is that when the shot was fired, he went down behind the podium like he was supposed to. Right. Yep. What's your, what's your uh, social media website? Where can we donate to you? We gotta put that out. All right, thanks, Congressman Grothman. I'll see you. We gotta put that out there. So, all right. Let's see. Thank you for So, okay. So, guys, so we can be here. So, for future reference, this is a media only entrance. Okay. Um. So I would send you to the guest entrance here. You're not going to go on the floor here. Okay. So if you can film and and stuff like that. It's going to have to be in either in this lobby, Captain People, in the lobby that's over there, that's just the guest entrance. Um, but I How do I there. get to that guest area? So that's just out. Come around. So it's on this side of his tent, so you'd exit yeah, out here way. and just through the guest entrance. Um, and you can catch members off the floor and stuff like that, but I just can't have you guys. Um, Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, take care. Thanks. All right, let's go over here. So we're we'll learning yeah. as we go. The rules. Okay, Back by the by Jersey State Troopers. All right. So yeah, the little guy kicked us out. Every once in a while, particularly uh, on that, some of the hearings that he's on, I've seen one of them so far for that stuff. I mean, he's moving in the right direction. Hey, you're missing the bus. The women, concerned women. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Let me flip this. I have like two producers and I, I have like a handler over here telling me what to do. I normally don't have a handler on the Rakeland report, but Rogers is taking the role. It's too close. It's too zoomed in. But oh, look at that, Patriot Mobile. If you want to change cell phone carriers, I recommend Patriot Mobile. Use my promo code Ivan, I believe it is, for a discount. 
I thought Grant was. Okay, let's see here. Media. The there we go. Guest entry. <laughs> guest entry Perfect. for the media. There you go. <laughs> Volunteers. So, the weather is fantastic. We are now going to the. Is this the Fister? No, the Five Service, the next building down. So what's this, this? This is the Milwaukee Panthers Arena. I think this is where uh, the arena. I think this is the school arena. I guess I think. Okay. See where it says U University of Wisconsin Milwaukee Panthers Arena. I see it. And then of course you can see. Look at the Coast Guard. Get the Coast Guard. Hey, turn around. Turn around. Get the Coast Guard. Coast Guard helicopters. Coast Guard helicopters. Check this out. I see somebody here. Uh, on the race for the past two minutes, I would like to interview you. Uh, I think you're running for Congress in Vermont. Here. <laughs> you want to put that down? Yeah. Before I put the camera on you? <laughs> All right. There. I'm here. How are you on this fine day, Mr. Ivan? Mark Thank Coaster, you, running for Congress in Vermont's which district? Uh, 01. The There's entire state. What? There is only one district. So tell us a little bit about you and where can people watch your absolutely fantastic campaign launch video that I saw a few weeks ago? Uh, you can find it pinned on my Twitter profile at capital C, capital M A R K, capital C O E S T E R on Twitter. You can so find it. So C Mark Coaster. Yes. Yeah. And you're a logger. I am the logger guy. Now, that campaign video, we'll have to play that. Actually, you know what? Let's go to that Twitter account, Mr. Producer, and play that campaign video to close out the show. It's Twitter handle M, no, excuse me, C, the, le the letter C. Capital C. And then Mark, M-A-R-K. For the capital L. And then Coaster. For the capital C. C O E S T E R. Exactly. It should be correct. the pinned tweet, right? Yes, I believe it's so pinned tweet. His pinned tweet. Let's go ahead and play that for people to find out more about future Congressman Mark Coaster. Just let me know when you have that ready and we'll play that. But while we wait for that to be pulled up, tell us a little bit about Vermont and why you're running for Congress. Well, Vermont has been sending nothing but Democrats to Washington, D.C. for 30 plus years. Uh, there were people that pulled shenanigans, changed parties. Uh, I don't believe they represent the best interests of Vermont or America. Uh, I talked to a Democrat the other day that mentioned very clearly he served four terms as a House rep in the state and four terms as a senator in state along with the current congresswoman. He said she did nothing but promote herself the entire time in Congress. I see she's doing the same thing in Washington. It's most certainly not in the best interest of America nor the state of Vermont. So we just talked to Congressman Glenn Grothman from just north of here, 12 miles, a congressman from Wisconsin. And I asked him, how many House seats do you think we're gonna pick up in this next Congress? And he said 12. So it sounds like you might be one of those 12 he's referring to. I would like to be one, yeah. Yes, I... <laughs> Mr. Producer, I did not, video if you I have I do not have a primary okay, opponent. Okay, we can't find the video, so we won't be able to play it. We have two minutes left then with you. Go to my talk. website. It's on a YouTube pinned in my website. Okay. Mark, the numeral four, Vermont.com. M-A-R-K. That's correct. Mark, four, Vermont, with the new, number four, dot com. All right, so with the one minute we have left, tell us one thing that you want to do should you get election, elected. Castrate the deep state. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> When's the election? Uh, November 5th, I believe. Because you are the nominee. Because I am the nominee. I got November the primary. 5th. Nobody had the courage to step up, run against me as well, a Republican. With that, Rakeland report out. See you guys tomorrow. We'll continue we'll live on the convention. We'll continue live on Citizen Media News right now. Citizen Media right. News. We're done. <laughs> you keep going. Go ahead, keep going. That's you, Citizen Media. <laughs> I'm done with my report. I got to focus on my stuff. Do you uh? <laughs> do you want a guided tour inside? Yeah, sure. Because we we just slipped in there because we were looking important. <laughs> Impotent. <laughs> you know, we did this before.
So we're on the Ivan Report Extra right now. How about that? You like that? Overtime. Ivan Raikland Report Overtime. Ra Raikland Report Overtime. Hey, guys. Huh? Wait, how do we get in, though? No, where's the guest? Right here. Guest entry. Guest entry. See, the uh, University of Milwaukee, Milwaukee Panthers. Hello. Is he coming? He's coming. Are we waiting on him? He's coming. Congressman. Hey, Congressman. We got to wait for these guys. There they are. Yeah. I'm so glad I got a straight forward third. Well, I was starting. All right, so we are real nerd voice. We know the path here. Yeah, Ben Berkman. Yeah, you gotta hit them. Victory Channel, Frank Speech. Oh, Zoe might be here. Let me let's show you to, the way to get. Let's go do a hit with her. <laughs> yeah, let's go. This way, gentlemen. It's Zoe. Look at who we have here. The one that's or behind or something like that. Really? Oh. It's like being cheap. Like it's like being cheap. It's like being cheap. It's like being cheap. She was doing a live stream. I can't even I just got here. They're not going to Look at you all snazzy. I have to be. <laughs> all right. So where are you going to interview? I don't know. Wherever. You let me know. Tell her I'm here. I guess. Oh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I mean, she's like, that was man. And, she's, and she wanted to do with the grassroots. No, but they're, they're too afraid to have me. I'm blacklisted because I'm too... She said she ahead of the game on a lot of issues because I have way too many sources. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He is. He's going to be doing a lot of media. <laughs> Max Schlapp and Kimberly. Wait, what's your name's in there? <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh, Hey, relax. Don't be looking at my phone. I'm not looking at your phone. Yeah, but oh, you're live streaming off my everybody else communicator. <laughs> I can't see your phone. <laughs> Sir? <laughs> Oh, I heart radio. The Daily Signal. Elon Musk said SpaceX at his headquarters. Texas, how far is that from Dallas? Who are you with? Seattle, Elon? They are leaving California, deciding street crime and this new transgender school law. He calls the last straw 
Elon Musk says racket man. Tony Perkins. I should have gotten a booth, I guess. Let's see what's going on. All right, so politics. Let's see. Oh, say hello to Michelle Moore, Michelle Woodhouse. Assassination attack that that's your, that's your shows up and yeah. <laughs> Michelle Woodhouse on uh, WPTF out of Raleigh. Oops. I firmly believe that far base Hey, congrats, man. I heard you just moved over two weeks ago. I want to talk to you when they get on top I mean, for those people like these guys that I'm talking about, you know, it's getting it. So it doesn't grow it. Oh, right. He's doing what the other side. Where's that at? Is that on the floor? No, floor? no it's, uh, you know where turning point stuff is? No, I just got here trying to um, figure it out. Well, it's right in front of the convention hall. We got a huge outside? Group. Yeah, outside. we have a huge outdoor set up. Yeah, he's always been on the street. Oh, yeah. That's but, he was looking for antiques. I don't know. I don't I couldn't. I take my number. Well, I don't know if you want that. Was uh, there was a story about a shooting out there? Yeah, it had nothing to do with that. No, okay. Oh, my yard sign? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's going on? Just got here. Oh, good. Good. I just like got off the set. I'm just doing an hour and a half. Oh, nice. He calls me, he texts me this morning, call me ASAP. I haven't talked. Yeah. Introduce. Is he here? No. Well, after we finish, he's like, I'm, a, I'm going to the convention with no security. So he might actually show up. Well, that's good. That's good. I got a pass for him if he needs to come. I'm going to text him. Excellent. What? This is your show. I know. Introduce. You'll be hosting right now. Roger Farina. Well, no, he, I don't know if you do like interviews yeah. for it. You do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, go ahead. He works for Real America's Voice. Gotcha. Well, I love yeah, Roger. There you go. He's usually, sure. He's usually for the night. Yeah, yeah, I'm out of North Carolina. Different events. Excellent, excellent. Oh, so, it's your show, man. <laughs> That's exciting. Were you there last night when Trump showed up? Uh, I was here in the studio. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. inside. We were broadcasting, and yeah. Um, so yeah, it was epic. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was on the floor. It was, it was so much fun. Yeah. Where were you on uh, on Saturday? Well, I covered about a hundred Trump rallies on the road, but right. Brian Glenn was covering that, so I didn't. I wasn't there. Yeah. Um. So, uh, but I covered a lot in Pennsylvania. Extraordinary circumstances, you know, but uh, kind of providential, right? Yeah. After all that's happened, so. Um, you know, it looks like the air is clearing and he can finally run for president. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, it's good news um, in the legal system. We were talking about what's going to happen on the other side. Yeah. Um, and even Vivek Ramaswamy was a, a speaker at our breakfast this morning and yeah. actually mentioned that Biden's not going to make it to November. What do you say to that? I don't think, think he's going to make it to November. Uh, there's no way. I mean, we're just waiting for the next speech to be flubbed. I mean, he looks better than he did during the debate. I want to know what kind of booty juice cocktails they're giving him. Right. You know, vitamin B, Adderall, Ritalin, who knows? But <laughs> I've got to say that, <laughs> excuse me, you know, it's a, it's like a, it's a, it's a, like a time bomb ticking with him. So, you know, the Democrats have painted themselves into a corner here. Where else do they go? They can't do the hatred and the vitriol and calling Trump Hitler and Mussolini right. and Kim Jong-un all the time. They can't do that anymore. 
Um, they're losing all their legal battles uh, to try to persecute Trump and a weaponization of government against him, political persecution of the leading opposition candidate. That's all going to pot. I don't even think that sentencing is going to happen now for Trump in New York City with the immunity decision and everything that's transpired. So, you know, where do they go from here? Um, do they throw up their hands or they pull a black swan of it, right? Who knows? Uh, I'm, I'm worried um, because... Um, you know, there's still a deep state element out there that doesn't want Trump in because they know he's going to clean house in certain agencies and stuff like that. Uh, but listen, this is Trump's to lose at this point. He's got the momentum. Uh, he's probably ahead five, ten points across the board of where he was right. in 20. 20 at this point um and uh you know there's a little bit more eyes on the electoral processes in these right. states a little bit more vigilance you need they're gonna have to do a lot to win this the democrats i don't i don't see it what do you think about what do you think about the the verbiage on the right about the nazi you know, fascist the, the bullseye you know and that's always figurative but on the left you know when he stood up and went fight 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 they take that literal do you, what do you think the difference between the figurative and the literal dynamic between the left and the right? The difference is, you know, I've covered about 100 Trump rallies in five and a half years across 35 to 40 states with Real America's Voice News. And, you know, these people are great people who come to these rallies. MAGA is just common sense. They're the small business person. People are tired of being told they're the bad people for being the good people. Right. The people who open the gates for their crews every morning are the forgotten men and women. You go to the town, they treat you like crap. You go to the state, you get nothing unless you're an illegal and you the feds. They just care about the retirements, you know, and the big bureaucratic, you know, system. So, you know, these people are the good people. They never ask for anything. They're God-fearing people. They're not radicalized. They're not far-right people. These people just want to have the government leave them alone. It's the left that have the activists. It's Antifa that even attack their own, like Andy No. They don't even know who they're attacking. So, um, you know, they're, listen, this is where the hatred and the vitriols come from. It's not from the right. Right just isn't um how do you like i'm a small journalist a yeah. citizen citizen journalist what can you say about the citizen journalists that are out there pounding like i started this because i was very angry because yeah. i didn't think my voice was being heard in support of donald trump i'm from new york yeah okay i grew I'm up long island yeah yeah that's where i'm from yeah. remember when we were kids and how he embarrassed ed koch with with yeah. the wall right oh wow yeah right remember that you know, and, and I've been a fan of his ever since, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and I just felt my voice wasn't being heard. So I started my, I call it my media empire, you know? but how, what, what kind of recommendations with your background to give to, to guys like me that are starting out with their podcasting? Uh, listen, uh, this, this, this whole dynamic has been changed. The MSM doesn't have the power that they once had. This isn't the families gathering on Walter Cronkite anymore, even though that was manipulated right. a little bit. Uh, but today's uh, MSM are just really activists to the left. And there's so many independent sources because of guys like you and because of voices, Real America's Voice News. You know, um, the, the truth is out here like the truth can't be bottled. The, you know, the lies can't, can't, you know, it's out of the bottle. The genie's out of the bottle. Right. right. So, you know, um, and until the uh, mainstream media starts acting responsibly, I think that more and more individuals are going to have the power, uh, especially with the social media platforms. I, I would just uh, recommend that, you know, keep it up and keep posting and telling the truth because, you know, we're not making up the news. You know, we're talking to people who can't feed their families. We're talking to people in New York City where 37,000 New Yorkers have been assaulted on the street this year between misdemeanor and felony assaults. 900 women have been raped since January. So they can say murders and shootings are down, but they can't really cover up the crime, the heinous stuff going on. The Dominicans in the up in Harlem where Trump was, I was embedded with the Trump team up there. A thousand Dominicans jumped on up and down for Trump. And that district in the South Bronx where Trump came for the Bronx rally, we were there. And there were 8,000 Dominicans and black people and Hispanics out there for Donald Trump, you know, just from that, from that demographic. And that district, that 42nd precinct up there had a 41% increase in burglaries since January, a 20% increase in felony assaults since January. 
along. And they can't yeah. bury the truth anymore because Hispanics and blacks who are citizens of the United States who are emigrated yes. here legally can't go to the store without getting mugged. And you go to the food pantry at four in the morning and there's a line of illegals waiting to get the food. So this, you know, um, I don't know if there, there's any going back at this point. I think. You know, um, and and this is partially responsible uh, for guys like you who get the right, truth. Right, right, right. Uh, everyone can see the truth now. Well, coming from Long Island, yeah, you go to the city a lot. You go to the plays yeah. and stuff like that. When we were kids, you'd see you see some of the bad stuff, but it would be down the alleyways or in an alcove of a store. Exactly right. One of the times I was home in the last few months, okay, on the corner below, Empire State Building is right there, on the corner, Empire State Building, three guys sitting there shooting up heroin. On the street corner, out in the open. Well, I have two kids who live in Manhattan, one in the Upper West Side, one in Soho, and Soho is like the richest neighborhood in New York City. Right. And somebody, a 31-year-old sneaker executive, gets shot and killed coming home from a night out with his friends uh, last week. Really? Uh, two people were killed in Tompkins Square Park, you know, on the Lower East Side. It's disaster. Right. So the crimes are heinous, and they aren't predictable. When I was a kid, my father used to take me down Jerome Avenue to see the poverty on the way to Yankee Stadium. Right. He used to go to Yankee Stadium, and he had to squeegee guys the bowery on the bridges the hell's kitchen kind of like a tourist event you're like oh let's go see the squeegee guys <laughs> you know and it was dangerous in the 70s but giuliani lowered the murders from 2,000 murders to 300 murders a year less than 300 murders a year but he also had the quality of life broken windows campaign he had community policing he lowered the crime on the subway guys jumping the turnstiles may have been wanted for felonies and other violent crimes yeah. and they they took the crime off the street and you had 33,000 people in Rikers Island now you got six to eight thousand nobody's going to jail the George Soros funded colors of change DAs are not punishing the criminals accountability that's the term it's a grown up in the military yeah. I signed up out of Hempstead oh wow yeah accountability you, you know yeah. so going back to politics real quick we had talked about uh biden's not going to make it till november yeah who replaces him Listen, yeah. i you know it's it's late in the game there's only three or four months to go here uh, I always envision Michelle Obama stepping in. She does want to be president. She had two books, just like Obama, she wrote uh, before he ran. She has a get out the vote effort, just like Obama did. Um, the convention is in Chicago, her home city. She's a radical leftist, oh. progressive Marxist activist whose mentor was Bernadine Dorr in the politics of fear and all, you know, Saul Linsky's rules for radicals. Her first job is for Valerie Jarrett in Mayor Daley's office. I think she wants it. She's on the cover of 150 magazines. They never put Melania on the cover. So, you know, I don't buy it that she doesn't want it. I don't know. It might be too late now to do that, um, but uh, I don't put anything past them because this convention is such a home run. You have a Democratic union leader, yeah, 1.3 right. million employees of the Teamsters, who's a Democrat and said, but my members are voting Republican, you know? And I don't know if they could put uh, put this, uh, if the Democrats can fix this. So I'm predicting their convention go one of two ways. Either they put somebody like Michelle Obama in there, or they're going to have the most patriotic Democratic convention where you actually see an American flag. The last convention, I didn't see any American flags. I think it was in Philly, maybe, or but maybe that was the time before. But, you know, these people, like, all of a sudden we're going to be patriotic because they're going to try to you know, keep that element from leaving the Democratic vote. And uh, I, I think they're, it's all Band-Aids at this point. They're in panic mode. They got nowhere to go. Trump's been resilient. Providence has reigned here. Uh, Trump has been uh, exonerated on all levels and surviving this incredible attack. Um, I think it's- Kamala? Run away. No. Well, she can't be Trump. Gotta have you wrap it up. Oh, okay. She okay. can't be no. Trump, you know? Okay. So. Well, we told her we gotta stop. All right. Good, <laughs> Thank good. you. Good. Thank you. What's your website? Uh, you can follow me at Dave Zier, D A V E Z E R E, on X, uh, at David Zier and all the other platforms. Thanks. Thanks. It was Thank nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. And what's really the. Amanda. You're almost on, I know. Oh. That's what happens. Pretty cool, huh? We're also gonna go see. Is there any Next time, Sean Gallagher. Who is it? He's the assistant capital police chief right now. Oh. He's the guy that needs to be really screwed. I mean, wow. He's got dirt. He's read the Blaze story that Steve Baker did on him. That guy is totally ruthlessly criminal thug. 
and he's yeah. willing, ready, and able to use his corrupt actions to escalate against others. So I'm trying to bait him to, to come after me, which gives me the reason and impetus to uh, respond in kind. Gotcha. Okay. Eye for an eye. Thanks, Joseph. Tooth for a tooth. Do upon your neighbor as they do unto you. Yes. Now it's my turn because they've already done unto me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See you, John. A way in. Another brick in the wall. How are you? We Just seeing you're safe. No. Let's see what's going on over here. Oh, that's just going. Stop eating that. Mark and I have been doing each other for too many years. Yeah. Hey, Dolly, friend, before you see what's going on. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's see here. Because if you're 59, 45. Okay. If Tommy's not here, you want to hop in and talk? Let me know if you guys want to interview me later. <laughs> I've never been on Sirius. It's because I'm too spicy for them. Totals? Politics? Mark K. Wait, wait, Mark K might have him. I think he's got three. Now, keep in mind, Kamala Harris is also a lawyer. <laughs> Okay, I got it. Done. <laughs> it okay, it, it, it's and it's going to be a keep a straight face. The best joke I've heard all day. It's going to be a great debate, though. I mean, JD Van versus Tom and, uh, You know, when you have a name like that, former we all know what he's not the congressman, is it? Nope. Radio host. Good. Yes. A little better. Oh, not not that Mike Gallagher, right? Yeah. Is that you, sir? No. Like uh, right there. Yeah. No, no, the, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hi. How you doing, Mr. Gallagher? How are you? Good to see you. How are you? Hey, how you been? Good. It's been a while, man. Yeah. I didn't you, realize you were from South Carolina. Now. South Carolina. I've spent okay. years there, yeah. 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 No, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I'm okay. We're just chatting. Good to see you. you guys I'm Mike. Ivan. Hi, Ivan. Nice to the see you. The deep state Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recognize you. Good to see you. How are you doing? Um, Is Zoe here? Oh, Zoe. Yeah, hey, get this. Okay. Is Zoe here? Are you with uh, National Poison Radio? Uh, we're about to go on the air, so I appreciate you doing a bit, but we're going live right now. Okay, great. Is Zoe here? No. She's not. Okay. No. She was the one that got me all the... All right. Remember the yeah. video views? Like a 10 million viewed video uh, on That's amazing. Because she confronted me over at the Weaponization Committee hearing. No idea what you're talking about. My name's Ivan Raiklin. Okay. Pleasure. Michael. Michael. Yep. Good to meet you. You're based out of Milwaukee? Um, no, sir. Washington. Washington State? D.C. D.C. Yeah. Yeah, so ask her. Sure. I, I'm not. You don't need to be uncomfortable. I'm not uncomfortable. I don't know who you're talking about. Zoe Chase. Okay. I'm not familiar with the incident. Okay. I'm sorry. I read it, it wasn't a, it wasn't a good sorry. look for your organization. Oh, it's not a bit. I mean, we're, we're talking to everybody. We're here, you know, <laughs> you're here on Media Row, and we're just what you're doing, fellas. Uh, if had I known, I would have played along. I swear to God. Okay, okay. You, you, I mean, well, it looks like you're in good faith, don't know, and I'll respect yeah. that. Yeah. And I won't just fuck you then. Appreciate it. <laughs> you think that's plausible? What, that he doesn't know Zoe? Yeah. NPR's huge, right? Yeah, it's true. I'll take him for his word. Let's go to the left. Say that was a good Let's go to the left. News, Newsmax. Yeah. Who's all here? Let's go this way. Who's I don't know who that is. I think that's probably Matt, right? <laughs> oh, nothing but commies. Local. You get this? Yeah. Yeah. Commies. Okay. News Vax. All right. The truth. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure. Yeah, man, we're yes. Positive. Positive. Are Absolutely. You sure? Positively. Okay. Ivan Raikland, the deep state the marauder. The oh, that? Ken Harris. Secretary of Retribution. Hey. Refund? <laughs> 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 Good haircut. Northern Virginia. 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 Northern Virginia
It's pleasant. Hello, Brandon. Can you hear me? Hey. Your local radio here in Milwaukee? Yes. I like it. I'm a traffic block talk. <laughs> that way you don't get accused of any time. All right. Try that. The look is there. It is. Hey, that's powerful. Yeah, so what are you all space Right here. Oh, local. Okay. Oh. What kind of scoop are you trying to get? Depends on what you have. Hit them next. We've got to, we yeah, got we to close check it out. out. Okay, so I'll he, tell you this. The one that got I'm the it. subject matter expert on the deep state by name. Mm. Date, place, and transgression mm. by section, division, department, and cabinet level within our federal government. You should be talking and about And be able to here locally. <laughs> this is the guy. Oh, absolutely. My show was on from 9 a.m. until noon. Okay. I just here. did an hour and a half with, I'm going to say it. We'll see the reaction. Alex Jones, and I'm about to go on Bondino or uh, with Rumble at four. Well, Alex 30. Jones around too? Yeah. Uh, I he might be showing up because I just did an hour and a half with him. He's like, he, he's going to show up. I'm just not here. Just, I don't he's, so no, he's still in his. He's in Austin right now in his studio, but he might just. He the way he reacted at the end of our interview, he said, "I'm just going to go without my security." And if you know Alex, it's like with him, it's like. Boom, just go. He should be a Thursday. He might be, no, he might be showing up. Yeah. He might already be landing. Yeah. Hopefully he got his credits already, <laughs> otherwise he ain't getting in here. I got it, man. <laughs> no, no, I got it. Hang in here. I got him. Are you a delegate? No. I'm just a guest. Hope you're right. Hey. Yeah, 9 o'clock? If you you hey, know, like, hey, was that Lauren? Is that Lauren? The Lauren. Show too. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren. Hey, yeah, we definitely need you. Lauren. All right, we leave. Keep crushing it. <laughs> All right, we got 60 seconds, Tory Lowe Show, live from the RNC, Elizabeth Brown. Yeah. 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 Powerful. 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 When I tell you that, you know, ain't no better time than the present to change your mind and change your life. Right now, be about that action. Be at the RNC. We outside. Hey, look, I think you could be anxious. As usual, we got a lot of work to do. Hey, as always. All right, DJ Brother Z. Does not treat Milwaukee as we think it should. Hey, look, Tory Lowe show live from RNC. We having a great time. Yes. Hey, love you. Love you. Be safe. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Dr. Kate Harris up next. Thank you. Okay, it's gonna be a spiky interview. Why do I know? Why the Because you know, being a lawyer. Why do I know the name? I don't know. Are you from North Carolina? Yeah. No, but I know I, the I, keep, name. I have my own show where we keep it clean, but if, if I'm on a podcast where it goes, like so, you heard the Hodge twins. Yeah, you, I, I, you I, heard yeah. the Hodge twins. No. Yeah. Are they on YouTube? I think the Hodge twins. Yeah. Yeah. The Hodge twins. Yeah. I'm, the, I'm, I'm the only one that they uh, censor. So we definitely want you. Truth Nation, we definitely need we need yeah. you. Yeah, we need to. I'll tell you who censored me. I'll tell you the names of the individuals at the FBI in headquarters at San Francisco field office and within Twitter that did the censorship industrial complex. All right. Dan, if you're ready, nine o'clock. I'm from I'm from Nine Sunu. Joe and Q Ivan Raikman. I'm also known as the Deep State Marauder. Yeah, I got a one. I got. I'll go with iPhone. Here, I'll give you one of my cards too. So you, you can. Yeah, you came in Here, here's one of my cards. You can get me through him. That's clean. That's this morning. I think it's good for the convention. Yeah, I, I was slipping. It's yesterday's. Oh, it's a dot. So the dot. Got all my information. So Damn, you're making me look bad. I like that. I respect that game. Easy. So Man, this guy's got some games. Even um. Hey, don't be some of my radio too. I don't care about your phone, Ivan. No, I don't want to dox him. Follow me. Out of respect. <laughs> you will see my political affiliation. So we are African American theme talk radio here in local Milwaukee. I'm the lighter local, skin. Local. I'm theme. light skin. You pick. Talk about local things, talk about politics. Obviously, we're talking about the presidential race because Wisconsin's a battleground state. I it is. Milwaukee is crucial. <laughs> and there's been a lot of courting. If you're going to be doing a conventional style election, I'm not so sure it's going to be a conventional election this November. I would appreciate if it was because I want our folks to be able to trust it. And right now, right now, no, sure. I will guarantee trust the way I do it. 100% guarantee. All right, I. Well, I'll save that for tomorrow. You save it. It's the most peaceful, patriotic, legal, moral, and ethical path forward. Seriously. I'm looking forward to hearing about it.
Not a single COVID shot fired. Fair enough. We didn't even talk about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan Reekland, the Reekland Report, overtime. That's going to be a fun interview. I need that recording. You bust everybody's chops, huh? <laughs> huh? You got to keep it fun. Phone news. Look at this. We got phone news here in the corner. Oh, it's in this whole space. Fox News. Hey, John. See. John, like it. See. How are you doing with these guys? That, I'm with uh, okay. Alan Frontline's to just do an interview. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> then I'm not going to berate you. <laughs> Thank you. Take <laughs> it. You're welcome. I think they can kind of do the same thing. Oh, it's coming in. Yeah. I'm through Chicago. I'm in Lincoln. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you want to Chicago drove here? I flew actually out. Yeah. Well, I should have driven. Flight was really. <laughs> no, I ended up driving. Nice, nice, nice. So what, you got a what kind of flight? It's a political consulting firm. You got to shoot stories. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Your neighbors. Where are, you, where are you based at Old, Old Town? Yeah, right at uh, right at the bottom uh, of Duke Street. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My, my, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm on the other side of Duke, so right, you know, the river. Oh yeah, yeah. Turns out, you know, that Home Depot is on exactly the end. That is, I've been yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. I go there a lot. I'm like so, four blocks. Nice. Away. Yeah, no, I live at Duke and Fort uh, Wayne Parkway, right that intersection. Um, but yeah, the office is down there, down by the river. All right. Yeah, stay in touch. All right, yeah, John. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, Steve Gruber over here. Steve Gruber. It is. I don't think I've ever been on your show, have I? Wait, wait, no, wait. Would you like to? Are you pissed off or something? <laughs> Mad at me? No. It's just I do all these other shows and I never get get around to doing yours. Well, you but I've always wanted to. Well, then there you go. Speak he to just the said, do I want to? Retired How are you? Lieutenant Colonel Green Beret, constitutional lawyer, deep state marauder. If you've been watching X lately, I've been tearing it up. Tens of millions of views. I just did uh, Hodge Twins. You heard of them? No. Oh, wow. Different oh, space. I'm totally out of my X on X. Ten, I'm, I'm totally out of 10 my million element. views on my uh, last my one. Really? Yeah, it was pretty good. So, and National Poison Radio reporter came up to me after the weaponization committee hearing. National Poison, I like that. And so she's like asking me questions. I'm like, oh, slow down. This is how it's going to work. I'm going to explain to you via, through you. I'm going to make a message to the entire deep state, and I'll list them by name. Name, date, place, and transgression. Would it be fair to say I'm a, probably a country subject matter expert down to the pixel level of who the de deep state is? All right. You heard of Mike Benz probably because okay. he did Tucker Carlson. Yeah. So if you want the master's class, you take his course. Right. If you want the Ph.D. level, you come talk to me. Yeah, I see Mike all the time. Yeah, I'm just thinking all. So, yeah, that's it. Well, He's testified in front of Congress, right? Ooh. You've been in front of Congress, correct? I testified in Arizona right. before a joint session of legislative. But uh, Congress, I talk to those guys all the time, give them advice and all that. Our path forward. Who's Anna the most dangerous person? Who's the most dangerous person to in whom? The deep state. To the deep state? In the deep state. Oh, to in the. Who's the most dangerous? I mean, Alejandro Marocco is in charge of uh, Secret Service. And I'd say order. take a look at my deep state target list that I published. All right. Uh, I got a little over 350 individuals by category. And we can we can run through them on the I'd on the program. That. I'd do that. I know, I do that. How can I get to you? Phone number? Info at uh, oh. phone number since I'm here. Like, oh, he's getting the he's getting some information. So, uh, yeah, we're early. in the morning, but we can tape you too. That's yeah. fine. We're early. We're live. My first one's at nine. We're here at five, 5 a.m. See, we're normally six to nine Eastern. But we're in seven. How about we go to set? Uh, how about can we do a seven o'clock? Or how, how long do you want to go? Because I can literally. Well, if we my short it. one is about obviously how, as short as you want. Right. But if you want short short, is four hours, my short version is about an hour. Yeah. If you want like a, an average runtime, because you're going to ask the same questions that I've been asked so many times because I've been doing this so much. Three hours. I can do the whole show if you want me to do it. Well, that wouldn't work this week, but it would work in the future. But I'll incorporate it to everything going on here because I'll incorporate who in the deep state is actually behind the, the entire problem, so from 2014. Our challenge is already have people lined up that are okay. scheduled, but I'm just pitching to no, see I'm, if it no, was, I understand. Open. No, there's an interest, but the, the, what we should do is do an opening. We can do now. A, a tease nine minutes. What well, you can do in nine minutes. Perfect. 
If we can figure them nine minutes sometime this week, if you've got it. We'll do nine minutes and then. And then we'll lay the groundwork for the future. Get the droplets down there. Right? Like, the now and the next you know how it works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so your last name. He, he, will talk, I mean, he will talk the entire time. Who is the master of the cliffhanger? Who is the master of the cliffhanger? Donald J. Trump. Yeah. I don't know. Wait. Break them. 202. We'll tell you after oh, break. Uh, uh, thanks, there, Donald. He's giving yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I think his phone number is accessible, but I don't. We're based out of. You said where? We're based out of Michigan. Michigan. Oh, so not too far. I've been up there a couple of times. You want that stuff? They were in Michigan. So that's kind of behind the scenes how scheduling works. Electoral votes that were handed in. It's not fifth. This this election cycle is fifteen. You have lost one. I'm saying in 2020 when you had 16. Yeah. Uh, your your good legislative yeah. body said. Yeah. I can I will get with you very shortly. Your name. That's me too. That's okay. me too. Sarah and Ivy. Oh. Okay. Ivan. Okay. Ivan Ivy. Not bad. Ivan. Not a bad name. Yeah. That's good. I like what you're doing. Really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Keep crushing it. Steve, Get the truth. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Keep the faith. <laughs> yes. Anthony's Always. my body man. Got you. How's it going? Keep your faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then there was MTD News. How you been? Good. Hey. How are you? Well, look at you all. <laughs> Good to see you, man. How are you? <laughs> Your name one more time. I've been the deep state marauder. Yes, yes. Now, according to your colleagues and I, raw sewage, you know them? Raw story. Okay. You heard of them? Yeah, yeah it's a garbage left wing yeah. outfit. <laughs> <laughs> they were doing attack pieces on all week. I'm just kidding. And then all of a sudden, you know, They've never had assassination fails. Yeah. Outside the so, so where are you based out of? I keep seeing you all over. Alexandria, Virginia. Okay. Yeah, because you're in the D.C. area. Yeah, but I see you like at all these events, and then I see you. In you follow me? Or... Okay, yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> dabble. Yeah. I dabble. Are you here till Thursday? Yeah, you want to interview me sometime? I'll have to schedule with the producer. We're like super booked out for this. Yeah, that's today, fine. But... Uh, this, cool. is, this is our uh, I'm here through Thursday, basically just doing another it. Grace. Yeah. Or is there another one, Grace, over there? I think so. Uh, All right. Yeah, so I can I can set the path forward on how we guarantee our money. Well, I think uh, we've been through all of Media Row here, so I think I'm going to call it quits. Citizen Media News, I hope you enjoyed our tour of Media Row. You got to spend some time with it. Deep State Murata, Ivan Reeklin, and how he does things. Um, so how we schedule schedule talent. Um, hope you enjoyed it. So, the state legislature's vote. So I was just on Alex Jones for like an hour and a half. No kidding.